Now, the four qualities that I can see that are needed for this kind of work, to, to get behind the conditioned mind that drives addiction, is compassion for the self, number one. And compassion is so lacking in a society, and particularly compassion for the self is so lacking in a society. Uh, the epidemic of uh, cosmetic surgery. It's a massive epidemic of lack of self-compassion. People just cannot accept themselves the way they are. And of course, society says, and you shouldn't accept yourself the way you are, because you're not good enough. But people say to me sometimes in workshops, I can't, I've never loved myself. I can't love myself for a second. And that's because they don't see love when they see it. Because they think that love, self-love is some kind of emotion. They think that for self-love, I mean, how many of you think that you don't love yourself? Have you had that experience of not loving yourself? Yeah? You know, well, the fact is, if you didn't love yourself, what the heck are you doing here? The very fact that you're here means that you love yourself. Because something about this topic said to you that there's a possibility of transformation. There's a possibility of being human. And by being human, all I mean is being comfortable in your own skin as you are. There's a possibility of that. And I'm worth it enough that I'll take myself to this event and see if I can learn something that'll help me get there. That already is self-love. So in other words, self-love doesn't have to show up in terms of gooey emotions or some kind of a warm-hearted regard for the self. But you know, when I look at it, knock on wood and I'll acknowledge myself, I've done a lot of things that have supported uh, my learning. And that's self-love. And that's all I mean, is uh, some compassion that there's a, something else is possible and that you're worth that possibility. That's all I mean. That's a necessary quality for uh, dealing with addictions. There needs to be some courage, a willingness to look at how it actually is. Not how you'd like it to be, but how it actually is. And so that one of the prime qualities of addiction is denial. So that the people that are addicted to profit, they will actually deny that the Alberta oil sands are going to pollute the environment. I mean, the evidence is clear from people who have worked on the project. But not to see that, and it's not just that they're denying it, it's not that just they know it and they deny it. They actually make themselves believe that it's not going to happen. That's the addicted mind. So in order to get over addiction, you have to actually have the courage to look at how things actually are inside here. And finally, you have to disidentify from the experience. Now, when somebody stands up at an AA meeting, and I am very much in favor of the 12 steps, this is not a, game, a, not a knock on the 12 steps, but when somebody says, I'm so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic, something in me doesn't quite like, like language. Because the language identifies the person with the uh, experience. It says, I am that experience. Well, you're not that experience. Addiction is not a person. Addiction is not who you are. When you say, I'm an addict, well, nobody is an addict. That's not who you are. Well, as long as we don't take those categories as categorical, as long as we don't take those categories as defining anybody, because nobody is a survivor. That doesn't define who they are. Because when you say, I'm a survivor, you will, you're simply defining yourself in terms of the past. In the present, you're not a survivor. You are whoever you are in the present. 